So once we have finished checking our assumptions, uh, we are ready to state our hypotheses. Now when we do our hypothesis testing, we actually have two hypotheses that we're working with. So the first one is like the baseline assumption. So we have some, yeah, we'll just put up baseline. And this is called the null hypothesis. And these guys, we write them in symbol form as h sub 0, or it said h naught. And that this is our baseline assumption. It's what we are testing against. So suppose we are doing uh, some testing. We can do the like miles per gallon again. Let's say that Ford makes some claim for a new car that they're putting out that it has a true mean miles per gallon that is equal to some claimed value. So Ford is going to claim that it equals mu naught. So mu naught, so this is, let, let me put up a, a couple of labels real quick. So this guy, let's get the pink. This guy is the true, true mean. So that's like the omnipotent being. They knows what this is. There is some true mean out here. And this is the claimed. True mean. All right, so the null hypothesis is that the true mean is equal to some claimed true mean. Now we can also do this with proportions. So if we did it with proportions, let me put this down here, this would be pi is equal to pi naught. And if we label these guys, this would be the true proportion. And this is the claimed true proportion. Uh, so it's some baseline statement. So Ford makes some claim about the miles per, per gallon of a new vehicle that they have. Now, the second hypothesis is what we want to conclude. And this is called the alternative hypothesis. And these guys collapse down into what we call H1. Now, in literature and textbooks, especially in like social sciences, uh, you will also see this as H sub A is the alternative hypothesis. I rarely ever use H sub A. I almost always use H sub 1, um, mostly because I like if we're going to be using numbers up there, let's use numbers uh, throughout the entire uh, situation. So, but occasionally you will see it a, as HA. I probably will slip up sometime and put it in there as well. But we have our alternative hypothesis. So our alternative hypothesis, it actually looks identical to the null hypothesis, except instead of an equal sign, we're going to put in an inequality. OK, so here it could be mu, and we'll have, let me put mu not over here. Or if it's pi, if we're dealing with proportions, we can do pi and pi not. And what goes in here can be one of three things. So it can either be greater than, less than, 
are not equal to. And down here as well, we can have greater than, less than, or not equal to. So in the alternative hypothesis, what we are really doing is we are basically saying that, okay, the, alter the null hypothesis is that the true mean is equals this claimed mean. But maybe we think that this claimed mean isn't quite right. Maybe we think that the, that the true mean is actually bigger than the claimed hypothesis. Or maybe we think that the true mean is less than the claimed hypothesis. And then the not equals is just, maybe we just think that it's wrong. Maybe we're not quite sure if it's too big or too small, uh, but we just think that it's not equal, that the true mean is not equal to whatever the claimed mean is. And so these three different methods, they give us a slightly different version of what we do in our testing. Uh, these actually will correlate to what type of confidence interval we actually want to use at the very end. Remember how we did our one-tailed and our two-tailed confidence interval testing? Well, if we have a greater than or a less than, we're going to be doing a one-tailed confidence interval. And if it's not equal to, we will be doing a two-tailed confidence interval. So that, that's kind of nice. We've, we've seen this little part before. It's just kind of, or at least the inequality portion, just kind of put into a new package. So that's how we state our, our hypotheses. And remember, the null and the alternative, they are identical. They are always identical, except for in the Null hypothesis, it will always be an equal sign, always. If there's anything other than an equal sign up there, we're, we're going to have a problem. Um, but down here, we are always going to have some sort of inequality. And that's the only difference between our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. OK, so once we have done that, we need to make sure before we go through and do you know a whole bunch of conclusions and stuff that we state state alpha. And we're going to go into a little bit more depth uh, later about what alpha actually means. But remember, our alpha level uh, is like the, the percent of the time, well, at least with our confidence intervals when we were talking about it, it was a percent of the time that our confidence interval missed uh, the, the true mean uh, or the, the true proportion, our parameter. Uh, we're going to dive in deeper into what alpha actually means because what we used before was just kind of a little bit um, of a glossing over. We're going to dive deeper into what alpha actually means. But we still need to state our alpha level so that we can have an alpha and we can have our confidence level. And finally, or not finally, but last one for this video, is we need to determine our testing method. So we're going to, I'll introduce you to some new tools that will kind of help you determine which testing method that you're supposed to use. Uh, but we've, we've kind of done this before. Remember when we were doing that with our confidence intervals, when we were dealing with the means, we had two options. And we had to determine, well, do we know the true standard deviation or do we not know the true standard deviation? And that gave us two different ways to calculate out the margin of error. So similarly here, we need to determine our testing method. And when we identify our data type, it actually, that's one of the steps to help us determine our testing method. Uh, and so that gets us through step six on our hypothesis testing.